Um, my name is Vivian Porrett and I'm one of the strategic leaders of Women Ed. Um, I'm so pleased that we can join you today and thanks very much for joining in this session yourself. I'm going to be joined later on with by Jules Dolby, another one of our strategic leaders, and we're both here to share with you what Women Ed can do to help you lead as a woman. I'm going to share my screen. Wonderful. I can see participants joining and that's excellent. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Um, so what can Women Ed do for you? Um, first of all, I don't know how many of you know anything about Women Ed. So we're going to give you some background first and then we'll talk about what we can do for you. Um, Oh, sorry, hang on a second, it's not letting me move on. Apologies. Let me try again. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, I'd like to say a word of thanks to Lift Lessons, who've been sponsoring Women Ed during lockdown, to be able to provide a webinar like this and to be able to keep communicating with our community. So big up to Lift Lessons. Thank you very much indeed. Um, our mission then. We want to empower women education to have the choice to be leaders. If they want that choice, if they want to do that, then we want to help them progress on their leadership journey. And we want to remove the barriers that are in place for them. You can see on the slides, the image we use, a lot of men shoot up the leadership ladder to headship if that's what they want to do. Women tend to not do that. They tend to have a journey that is more a climbing wall. Um, on, across, over, off, on, across, over, and gradually they move their way up to leadership if that's what they wish to do. But there are barriers in their way and we want to help remove those. Interestingly, my leadership journey to become a secondary head teacher looked more like a man's. I do wonder if that's because I didn't have children. And maybe there are systemic barriers in the way that society needs to address. And we want to play our part for education in that way. And don't worry about your leadership journey if it takes longer than you want it to. Um, you know, we have to, you have to face it, I don't. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we have to face the fact that you could be working till you're 68. So honestly, there is no problem with time. Take your time, choose what you want to do, when you want to do it, and it's right for you. And we're here to support you to do that. These are our values. We're definitely a values-driven organization. And these are known as our eight Cs, if you've ever heard that before. And obviously today we're, we're working on connection and communication. And thank you very much for joining us. Um, we do challenge. We challenge individual women. We challenge the organisations which employ them. And we challenge, absolutely challenge, the systemic barriers, the policy makers that enable education to continue to be what I'm about to describe as an inequitable profession. And that's why, that's our why. That was one of the original challenges that started Women Ed 12, uh, five years ago. Just look at that data. Um, it doesn't seem right. And what we certainly want is proportional representation. 
So in primary, why aren't 75% of all head teachers women? And in secondary, look at that, that that's really upsetting for somebody who was a secondary head teacher. So that galvanized us to, to do something because we believe things are going backwards, getting worse for women. Um, I don't want to send out negative messages because we're here to, do, to show how we can tackle all of this. Um, the other why that we think is important is the gender pay gap. That also galvanized us to do something. Um, just have a look at that. At every stage in education, on average, that's the mean pay, on average, men are paid more than women. How is that in a profession dominated by women? That's the question, isn't it? That's the most important question that we could be asking about the gender pay gap. Why is it that at every stage in a school, men are paid more than women on average? And that gives you another look at it, which was also one of our original whys in 2015. That actually put some quite specifics on it. And if you look at those two slides, it does look as if things aren't improving, doesn't it, with the gender pay gap. It's really important that we tackle these two issues together. And that led to our focused campaigns. We want to increase representation of women in leadership roles. We particularly want to increase representation of BAME women of women from the majority of ethnic communities that are working in education and the numbers there are stark in terms of representation and gender pay gap more so than for all women to help more women make that journey through leadership if that's their choice we advocate for flexible working practices apologies we advocate for flexible working practices. And we also are working to reduce the gender pay gap. One thing we do about that is highlight the fact that if you're working for an organization with more than 250 employees, then your organization has to now report their gender pay gap. They couldn't do it this year, obviously, but the gender pay gaps for last year are all there on the DfE website. If you search gov.uk um, and gender pay gap, it pops a very handy little calculator and you put the name of your organization in um, and it pops up with your organization's gender pay gap. One thing you can do to start working on that is simply ask your organization, why have we got a gender pay gap? Sometimes the answer we get when I ask that question is, well, you see, Vivian, the reason we've got a gender pay gap is because women are paid less than men on average. I get that. <laughs> I get that. I don't need mansplaining that. What I do need to know is why. Why is it at levels in our organisation, particularly senior levels, why is it that women aren't paid as much as men? So we focus our campaigns across those four areas, but we do a lot more work around that also. Um, and these are finally our other challenges that we, we get happening there. Have a look at those. I'm just going to stop for a little bit. I'm going to put the screen off. And I'm going to ask you to just write down in the chat. We've got anybody adding anything in the chat? No, go on. Now you can. Um, add something into the chat about what are the issues that you find? What are the issues that seem to hold you back as a woman? 
what are the kind of unconscious bias what are the kind of difficulties that you have and you face if you don't face any brilliant that's it that imposter syndrome vanessa thank you for kicking us off there um i've also got a question while we're letting you add things in there that are we focused on teachers or those in education we're focused on every woman in education who aspires to lead or is an existing leader um, for the education sector as an industry on payrolls there are quite a lot of data we can use um, for example when you put education together as a sector with everybody working in that from nurseries through to universities including all support staff then education has the third or fourth worst gender pay gap we're up at the top with construction and banking and we duke it out with mining for third or fourth place that's shocking, isn't it? When I became a teacher, I believed I was joining an equitable profession that had at the heart of its values, fairness, social justice, equity, trying to make a difference for our students and our staff, surely. How can we make a difference for our students if our staff aren't able to believe that they're being treated fairly. So the fourth worst sector, including all sectors, and it's not because we're a feminized profession, it can't be that, because health is a feminized profession, health is, and they've got a very small gender pay gap compared to us. So something is going on in education and it's getting worse. I'm loving the comments coming through. Well, I'm not loving the comments coming through. Some of them are horrible. Some of them are horrible. Oh yeah, you see, this is why, Liz, we focus on flexible working conditions. It's also why we want to... What, Pippa? Oh my God. Pippa, may I read out what you've said? Just put, yes, if you can, because I won't otherwise. Um, there's some really upsetting comments in chat, and this is why Women Ed are here. We're going to actually do that. Thank you very much, Pippa. Pippa was directly asked in a job interview in her NQT year how, as a petite woman, she could plan to control her classes. That's illegal. That's illegal. But how do you deal with that in an interview? So these are all the kinds of things that we work on and tackle. You keep putting those comments in. I'm just going to check the questions and answers. So I've answered that. No, we're focused on all women in education. We're also focused on men, by the way. If there are any men here, let me know. Um, we're absolutely focused on men because surely, surely male leaders are as focused on equity and fairness as women leaders. They're as ethical as men, as women, aren't they? So once they know the barriers that are there for their female colleagues, for women leaders, they'd want to work to improve that, wouldn't they? That's important, isn't it? So for men, men are completely welcome in Women Ed because this is about how we improve the profession so that the best people are in leadership roles and making a difference for our students. And at the moment, women are being held back from doing that to the best of their ability. So our students aren't getting the best that they could get. That's what Women Ed is about. I'm going to go back to the screen now. Okay, so those challenges set us off, didn't they? 
Um, a little bit about us then. We started just over five years ago from a rant on Twitter. And all we wanted to do was give women a voice on Twitter. We're now a global network with 30 networks in 19 countries. And we now have a phenomenal community of women and men working to make a difference across the world. There's our graphic of where our networks are. So we go from Canada to Australia. Our latest network is Kazakhstan. We have Singapore, we have Middle East, North Africa. The little dot down near Argentina is the Falkland Islands and lots and lots in the UK and in Europe. We're working on um, networks in Malaysia at the moment to develop and support a team there. And the most incredible thing about all of this is our network leaders around the world are all volunteers. Everybody in Women Ed works because they're passionate about making a difference for other women. We know there are stereotypes around about women not supporting women. Well, we're smashing that stereotype completely. You can't and won't join the Women Ed community unless you want to support other women. And the stories of other women are what are capturing women's hearts and minds and encouraging men to understand what they can do to help. So if you want to join in, then you, when you get this PowerPoint available on the box website, what you can do is click into there, see all the networks and see if there's one you'd like to engage with and join in. And then what we've got are, we've written two books. So I never quite know how to say that still. <laughs> From a rant on Twitter to two books. Um, we realized that we wanted to do more than we could say on Twitter. So what we did was to be able to, what we did was to be able to, oh, what we wanted to do was to be able to communicate with more women than access Twitter. So we started writing 10% Braver. 10% Braver is our mantra. One of the ways we want to help women is to build their confidence so that they really, really can tackle themselves some of the issues that hold them back. We also want to tackle the system, as I said, we're determined to make changes there, but that's going to take a long time. And we can't wait, we're not gonna wait. So while we're doing all the work together with the system to make changes, we can make changes ourselves. We can be 10% braver. And the first book, Inspiring Women to Lead Education, tells you how, shares our stories. That's where a lot of our focus campaigns came from in terms of the evidence in the book. I wrote the gender pay gap one, and that's where the evidence for education as a very poor sector for gender pay came through shocked me shocked me completely um so the first book went down very well and we've written a second and it's in production at the moment being 10 percent braver that's a book of women's stories why women had to be 10 percent braver what they did to be braver what it felt like, what the outcomes were, and what they would want to advise other women in those situations. Comes out in December this year, a uh, handy Christmas present. And um, for yourself, for other colleagues, and for men, male leaders need to read these books because it tells them how they can help their women leaders in their organizations. Put it in front of your head teacher. Put it in front of your trust, 
<laughs> put it in front of your trust CEO, your trust trustees, the people who make the decisions about who are leaders in their organization. Could be a great secret Santa present, could be. And here's our impact. I'll give you a chance to have a look at that. It's a bit bonkers that we've got 33,500 followers on Twitter and I hope a few more today. Really, really bonkers. But it's fabulous because we're reaching women all over the world and saying, you know, enough's enough. It's time for change now. We have blogs on our website. You can sign up for our newsletters. We've got 130 network leaders who are all volunteers. I've lost count of the number of events and we've done a lot over lockdown, which is great. We can reach even more people. We collaborate with the Department of Education on flexible working and our work on diversity and increasing the diversity in leadership teams so that leadership, leadership teams look more like their communities. And with COBIS, an international organization for schools, we work with them on changing policy and practice. You may have seen on Twitter, if you're on that recently, a lot of tweets about the Women Only Leadership Masters, where we've partnered with the National College for Education to have a women ed cohort so that a group of women can bring about social change in education by studying and reading and learning about leadership through the lens of a woman. Because women can look at things in a different way to men. And we need that diverse thinking in our schools and in education. And as we said, our books are coming out shortly. But this is the kind of impact we really, really want. We want to see women stepping into every level of leadership. And we will do everything as a community that we can to support you. We have a lot of ways in which you can keep touch with us, whatever is your favourite social media of choice. Our website is where you can read the blogs and you can sign up for a newsletter. We are on most social media, media mediums, most social media. Um, and when we put this on the website for the books, um, National Teaching Learning Day, they'll all click through to links for you. Okay, that's our final question to you. How are you going to be 10% braver from now on? I'm gonna stop sharing there, just to let you think about it. I'm also needing to check whether is Jules here at all? I've kept looking to see if she was. Because my colleague was going to join me, but I can't see her. No, she's not been able to. Okay, so 10% braver. We've got lots of time now to have a think about. Oh, you're there, Jules! Hello. Hello. Good to see you. Hello, everybody. I've done everything I was going to do. Okay. Let me see if I can share my screen if it's all going to. Oh, now it does say, um, uh, Vivian, I think you might need to enable me to share my screen. Um, or I did email you the presentation, if not, so I could, we could do oh. it that way. Right, I didn't get a chance to see that then. I should have enabled yeah. it now for you. Oh, great. Okay. Here it is. 
Perfect. Oh, it has worked. That's excellent. Right. Hello, everybody. So um, I just wanted to talk to you about um, our gendered teas. Um, and some of you may or may not have heard it, um, but it's chapter three of our book and it's all about gender stereotyping um, but how that doesn't just limit women it limits us all um, in our own perceptions of how we treat children um, our own children and as teachers um, how we treat our teachers and um, and how people perceive so we look um, women ed is very much around increasing leadership for women um, but we don't have many male primary school teachers, for instance, and nursery school teachers. So part of gender cheese was always around that. How it started was um, Vivian and I used to chat quite a lot, didn't we, Vivian, on oh, Twitter? Oh, yes, we did. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and these images used to come up. And then finally, there was this one image um, that was sort of cheese, like baby bell and they'd done um, gendered cheese. So they had gendered the cheese for girls and for boys. And, and it was kind of like the last thing for me. I was like, no, this is ridiculous. And so I started this sort of hashtag gendered cheese, never imagining it would become anything more than a couple of days. And um, it just sort of stuck really. And it became our unofficial hashtag for women ed. And um, it was at the same time, it was really through gender cheese. I think that I joined women ed, Vivian, wasn't it? it? Was it was uh, Vivian and I used to talk and then um, she asked me whether I'd be interested and um, and I absolutely uh, was although as we know with women ed I had imposter syndrome and I was like oh I don't you know I'm, I'm not I'm not a leader and I used to have all these um, very women ed things that we fight against um, coming out but these images for me is this subconscious this sort of subliminal images that we are we are kind of bombarded with really in the shops and we have to be really aware I think as well of our girls are bombarded and you can see just from this one on the left um, where it's the most extreme example but there is a baby grow a pink baby grow with I hate my thighs on it so right from the beginning um, we're we're sort of in putting these feelings um, into to girls and then boys have this I'm super so, uh, you know, this Superman thing, you can even see with Toy Story how just um, it's the same pyjamas, but look at the characters um, in Toy Story, the girl characters for the pink ones. There's a few, the dog is shared and the alien. Um, but other than that, you've got the girl cowboy on the right with the pink and the boy on the left. And, you know, I've had um, many parents say to me that they have struggled for their boys to find um, pajamas with the uh, with Ray from Star Wars um, she's the main character and they find them on girls pajamas but not on boys and yet their their boys love this character because she's the main character in Star Wars um, and there doesn't seem to be any so it's you know like I say it limits us all um, boys might want to really love the um, Elsa from Frozen um, but there's only 90s available with Elsa on um, and so it's having a think about um, ungendering really um, all our things and supermarkets have got a big role to play in that but the impact for all of us um, going through our lives right up to leadership um, is there you can see this sort of mindless um, gender stereotyping um, we've even got pink laxatives <laughs> this, you like you know for sensitive stomachs uh, whereas you know they're dependable for the men um, so it's the same stuff you know it's the same stuff packaged in a different way and the globes you know for our geographers you can only um, have a, a pink globe if you're a girl or, or whatever and then this very awful and David and Goliath the people that made this phone um, this is a phone case uh, this one on the right that says I'm too pretty to do maths um, dumb blonde and they say oh yeah well it's a joke you know it's um uh, you shouldn't be taking it so seriously. But, you know, we know um, girls do not take maths at A level um, and then especially not when they get up to university. So it's 50-50 at GCSE 
Um, this is in STEM subjects, this, and this is in the chapter, these um, uh, details, but 50-50 at GCSE, and then it goes, um, you know, a much higher proportion for A-level, and then a huge proportion of men taking STEM at university. And so it, it goes from 50-50 to, I can't remember the stats exactly, but 80-20 um, by the time they get to university. So, and these types of images that we're getting, this perception, um, I feel the gendered cheese does really um, impact. Um, so we end up with blue jobs and pink jobs. And even Theresa May, I think, when she was prime minister, was interviewed about um, what, what jobs they did. So the prime minister of our country, and she still talked about how, um, you know, he put the bins out or whatever. And, you know, yes, it might happen <laughs> in, in uh, different genders and we all have different roles, but, you know, do they always have to be the same roles? And why are the stereotypes there for, um, for you know, a lot of uh, people are in the forces and um, it's very ungendered around uh, doing the ironing for your uh, uniform. So I'm um, thinking about that. Um, and this slide actually was from Helena Marsh, who did um, an assembly for her school on on gendered cheese and she said the students really um, came up with it and one of the first activities they did was to to write down what did they think were the were the blue jobs and what did they think were the pink jobs so and we've even got Actimel <laughs> who have decided that we've got postmen and lollipop ladies and they have their different names for their drinks and this happens more and more and I think you start to open up and see who's there and, um, and and what's around and so actually if you do go onto twitter and you look at the hashtag gendered cheese then it would be it's really eye-opening to suddenly go around these stores um, and see things like um, Actimel deciding to do it. The Kinder Eggs are terrible for it. They have the pink Kinder Eggs and the blue Kinder Eggs. Um, but the supermarkets do it, the card shops do it. You know, everywhere you go um, there's gendered cheese really. And it's something that there's lots of, and again in the book we put some um, links in because there's a wonderful, we're very good friends with Let Toys Be Toys, um, who are um, a hashtag and, and um, Twitter site on, on Twitter. And they often tag me in with Gender Cheese and I tag them in with Let Toys Be Toys. But they also have Let Clothes Be Clothes and Let Books Be Books. And it is particularly for highlighting all these gendered um, bits. I added this one in for two reasons. Um, you may notice the girly SWAT sweatshirt. Um, this came up after some Boris Johnson, our Prime Minister, um, criticised a, a politician for being a girly SWAT, as if it was a criticism. And so there was a wonderful comedian, I've forgotten her name, but she went on to, she designed a sweatshirt and um, she went on to, have I got news for you, with this sweatshirt that I'm wearing there, um, with girly SWAT, and it really caused a stir. Um, but it was embracing the term and empowering it and saying, yes, we are all girly swats and we're very proud of it. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, you know, to criticise somebody for, for doing their homework and doing the detail and researching and giving him a hard time in, in the poli as a politician. And that shouldn't be something that um, he's actually criticising. Um, he's very bad for it. I mean, he's definitely done uh, Girls Blouse was another one. Um, you'll remember probably quite recently when um, uh, a, a woman of colour as a politician who was always a, also a doctor um, was questioning Matt Hancock in um, the parliament recently. Um, very reasonable questions and based on her own experience and she was told to mind her tone. Um, so the, there's lots of sort of gendered language which Vivian is amazing at when you're looking at applications um, for as well. There's lots of gendered language as well. So, so I put that girly squat up but we also do have women ed in tech um, women Ed Tech, and it's, a, it's an offshoot, a sister Women Ed um, group network for particularly women in technology. And again, this is um, Kirsty Grundy and Buki Youssef here, and we are all part of Women Ed Tech. And we talk about tech is even worse, I think, than, than leadership. You know, you go in um, to any places. I went to Betts once and I had a budget to buy some laptops and I was really patronised by um, a particular um, maker of laptops and I've refused to buy them ever since um, because I said I have a budget, I want to buy some laptops and he just 
sort of looked at me and went, oh, that's nice, as if, you know, oh, and he was looking behind my shoulder for, for a man to go and buy the laptop. So that irritated me. And there are lots of um, experiences of women in tech. Um, also, though, when we talk about the stereotyping, what type of jobs in tech there are? Because, um, again, you know, you've got your IT technicians and it, it, uh, great to see women um, within IT technicians, but also there's so much other tech happening in schools and we need to be confident. And as I said at our birthday, Vivian, wasn't it, where I said we, need, we, we do know our onions, you know, we know our we stuff. Do. Um, and we mustn't, um, people, that perception that we don't um, is very interesting. Uh, another, I shan't name the person, but she's um, a technology person in a big teaching um, organisation. Um, recently, um, she was approached about um, some software and the questions she asked, um, the answers she got were very much around, you know, pretending or, or assuming that she didn't know anything about technology. So actually, um, it wasn't great for them either because she really caught them out because she, when they started giving her some answers that didn't really look at the technical specifications, they weren't able to answer her questions. And so it was this assumption again that she wouldn't know the tech part. So it's not great for companies either. So, you know, that diversity, um, of having different people and different thinkers and different experiences in a group is, is very very important and um, this was from lego and lego were one of my favorite people i thought were very ungendered this is from their magazine and it's got loads of girls talk, talking about scientific jargon and saying how boring it is um let's bring some fun in and they go on to bake some muffins and so you know and i get very disappointed that lego have gone down that route because they were very much an ungendered type of company before what can we change so this was something i did um uh, in a in a shop just so this was the girl you can see the one on the right uh oh, always ready to smile and hey cutie were in the girls department and this future scientist was in the boys department and i sort of got it over from the boys department and just put it there to take the photograph and i just thought why why is that not in why is that so unusual why isn't that in the girls department of of the supermarket store so we can we we might not want to go around i did get in trouble for suggesting that everyone moved to close around because they were saying then the people <laughs> were the still had to go and tidy them up so i might not suggest that you do that but do take a picture and then put it back maybe um but just just to really challenge everybody about that and also um what i did i tweeted the supermarket that i came from and said i'd like to see that please in the girls um department because it's a lovely top and i know you know i would like to wear that my daughter would like to wear that why isn't it there um but there's also Aldi, I do have to give them um, a thumbs up and a women ed um, five stars because this is how it can be done. This is ungendered advertising. You know, you've got a boy at the ironing board, you've got a boy and a girl looking at the mirrors in the kitchen, looking at dolls houses and being a primary school teacher there. Um, it can be done. It's very easy to do. And when I look at it, I don't think it looks unusual. And that's what we should be seeing more of in the card shops ungendered, in the in the supermarkets ungendered, anything in the marketing. So I really want to praise Audi for doing that because that's that was a conscious decision that they did that. And um and what a difference it makes, isn't that lovely to see? It um really makes me me happy. So this is just from the book talking about how to link gendered cheese really with our community. Um, there are other other ideas it's not just clothes and and things but here's just some suggestions do join us on twitter um do look up the hashtag and ta and do tag me or tag gendered cheese because it's um it's a great way of just looking through um actually for teaching as well if you want to do an assembly just look at the tag and um at the hashtag and you get loads of images that people are putting up all the time um commit to no more manuals than male only panels finding more female chair of governors that's a, a big thing um female governors but chair of governors is seems to be um the thing as well or trustees and stop those gender cheese boards um we have recently sue cowley's very good at this has looked at some of the boards on the big multi academy trusts and they are not particularly representative of their communities 
and then be proactive ensuring diverse representation at all levels um, but especially in leadership and um, I was, um, um, Alison put this on for me, but this was something I think I said once, but I stand by this, that diversity makes for better decision making. You will have a better um, community, but also a better business or a better school if we've all got the crack at that equality. And um, there's more experiences and many voices in that room. And that's what we strive to do linked to gender cheese very much um, in a funny way but also in a very serious way so thank you thank you do you want to stop sharing there yeah lovely thank Good. you very very much everybody we hope that's been useful for you that was super jules love that and in the chat we've got thanks for a great assembly idea so there we can have hundreds of assemblies going on when we're able to um but if you're doing an assembly online then you've got a wealth of resource you can draw on there that'd be brilliant um thanks ever so much for the everything you've put in the chat thanks for joining us here and have a fabulous day and please say hello to us on twitter thank you very much thank you bye bye, bye.